Hello and good morning to all. Welcome to two-day APEC virtual health tech innovation conclave. For next two days, we are going to discuss and deliberate upon various aspects of using health 4.0 technology and innovation to build that comprehensive healthcare ecosystem. And today in the inaugural session, we have a special guest with us from the state of Kerala. We have with us Dr. Rathan Kelkar, a senior IS officer who also happens to be the mission director of National Health Mission Kerala and special officer and executive director, State Health Agency, Government of Kerala. We welcome Dr. Rathan Kelkar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So my first question to you will be that I want to get a perspective from you on your thoughts on health 4.0, how it can transform India's healthcare sector. Your thoughts on that, sir. The information technology has always been a boon to implement various uh, initiatives in various sectors. And uh, health is not any uh, different as far as uh, utilization of technology is concerned. So the technology has always been uh, very proactively embraced uh, both in the public as well as in the private sector, be it any uh, particular kind of uh, vertical. And uh, health has also uh, utilized uh, this transformation which is happening in the IT world to the benefits of uh, the health sector and uh, for the delivery of health services. If you uh, recall the days when uh, people used to, you know, always uh, you know, go to a particular hospital uh, because uh, the doctors were uh, available only in that particular hospital, people would travel kilometers from far and wide to go and meet the doctor. But now the same doctor is available at the fingertips. I mean, this is a kind of uh, a transformation which has happened mainly because of the use of uh, information technology. So the various versions that we keep speaking about uh, in terms of uh, healthcare uh, 4.0 or uh, earlier it was uh, 3.0. I mean, whatever is the, uh, the version we talk about, uh, when there is a need for utilizing the information technology in any sector, that uh, sector should definitely embrace uh, the technology because the services which are intended to be delivered to the people is uh, readily available to be delivered and using technology, we can make that as a, a, a force uh, to give it to the people at their fingertips. And the kind of uh, revolution which has been brought about by mobile technology itself uh, has helped uh, to a large extent in delivery of health services per se. And if you're uh, asking about uh, health uh, care 4.0, I look at it in uh, various uh, 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 in verticals. One would be in the delivery of uh, the preventive services, the delivery of uh, curative services, as well as the delivery of uh, rehabilitative uh, services. Uh, so when you're looking at uh, information technology in the preventive aspect, uh, the prevention is better than cure, as we all know, and the promotion of health and wellness is a very important activity. And creating a know-how about how to do that using technology, using mobile applications, using uh, IEC tools uh, uh, pinpointedly de being delivered to the target group on their mobiles itself is a, a boon uh, in terms of giving awareness, building in capacity, building in IEC amongst uh, all the people. So that is very, very uh, important, uh, you know, when we're looking at the prevention and, uh, you know, a promotion of uh, health and wellness uh, as a whole. And uh, looking at the way in which we collect data in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, promoting health, uh, be it the government system, we have what we call IHIP, we have uh, NCD applications, which collect data from the uh, field using ASHA workers, using, uh, you know, various other frontline workers. And, uh, you know, culling out uh, uh, data and making sense of uh, the data, using that information and knowledge to interact back uh, in that program itself uh, is mainly because of the transformation which is happening in the uh, digital world. When we come to the uh, curative aspect per se, we looking at it in two ways. One, the way in which uh, the machines have developed, devices have developed, uh, which uh, uh, helps in the treatment of uh, people as well as giving back 
crucial information to the physicians and other healthcare workers so that interpretation of that would definitely help in the management of that case and here we have ehr telemedicine the and the continuum of care using the private sector as well you know so that there is seamless transfer of patients management forward linkages backward linkages uh, you know all of these things has been made possible mainly because of uh, the uh, boon uh, which we have got because of the info uh, information technology and coming back ultimately if you want to monitor some people ultimately looking at some ailments having some kind of a predictive analysis of uh, the diseases or uh, throwing back uh, you know <coughs> prognosis and uh, good diagnostics uh, using technology i mean that is also available in, uh, at, at the fingertips so uh, all these aspects go hand in hand there are a lot of stakeholders involved in the uh, management of healthcare and every vertical in the healthcare is also embracing technology be it the pharmacy be it diagnostics be it the healthcare professionals hospitals and the patients themselves so all of these stakeholders and the ecosystem like we mentioned in the beginning when they all come together uh, looking for a common goal i mean there is synergy of uh, efforts and we see uh, the kind of results that we are seeing uh, now because of the use of information technology what will be the challenge uh, according to you if we want to implement health 4.0 in the indian scenario i think it's a very complex uh, ecosystem we are working in uh, the the challenge here is Uh, the kind of uh, population we are catering to, you know, uh, the kind of uh, healthcare uh, needs which are there with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, is across the country is varied. It is not that you are looking mainly at the preventive and promotive aspects. You are in uh, one case, for example, Kerala is looking uh, in a big way at NCDs, whereas in other part of the country we are still, uh, you know, uh, grappling with the communicable diseases. So the healthcare requirements of the country is vast and varied that itself is a challenge now when you're looking at a it solution uh, i'll give you an example of uh, uh, our aishman bharat the digital health mission which is coming in here we are looking at various uh, stakeholder involvement and that there are multiple stakeholders there are ma- multiple legacy systems already in place uh, so how do you Uh, manage the legacy system and have that smooth transition into the Aishman Bharat, the digital health mission. How do you create that synergy between various data sets? That is definitely a very big challenge. And the complexities of uh, uh, delivery of these healthcare services in a, a populace which is still not so IT savvy, especially when you go to the uh, rural areas, uh, definitely. uh you know that will definitely be a challenge which can probably be overcome through capacity building and training and orientation of various stakeholders because we are all very comfortable with the mobile uh, per se uh, but uh, when you're looking at delivering a health service which is very complex uh and uh, creating a digital health record like what uh, aishman bharat is uh, intending to do it's a very complex process uh, multiple stakeholders legacy systems uh, in place and uh, you know varied the requirements of the population so that itself makes it very complex and very challenging but nevertheless uh, steps have already been uh, taken by all uh, uh, concerned uh, you know verticals including the state governments as well as by the uh, union government so now we had to bridge that synergy and ensure that uh, there is a complete uh, transition and a complete unified ecosystem to deliver these uh, health services so it's a, a very complex scenario uh, unlike in some countries which are very uniform uh, the population is very stratified and uniform there is no uh, a problem as such in uh, addressing those kind of uh, small populations but uh, a country like ours with a huge population with varied uh, developments in the Uh, or uh, i would say uh, evolvement in uh, the it scenarios in their respective states evolvement of the health systems to even understand that it system is also varied uh, so you can have a very beautiful software that doesn't mean that it will you, know, you can straight away use it somewhere because uh, you know people are more complex than the software solutions so overcoming that complexity of uh, human behavior uh, 
overcoming the incapacities which uh, people have in embracing technology, maybe because of their uh, uh, varied, uh, uh, you know, uh, responses to a change. It can be legacy systems and all this. Uh, if you look at in a very, uh, you know, with the micro lens, you'll see that a lot of challenges exist, but we have to take baby steps and uh, move forward and ensure that, uh, you know, this ecosystem uh, comes together. A good example is what uh, ministry is uh, 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 attempting to do using this IHIP, wherein you had initially IDSP and various other uh, states had some, uh, 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 you know, other uh, localized solutions which they were connecting to IDSP uh, using um, their uh, APIs. Similarly, with NCD app, there were a uh, lot of other states which, uh, who are using a different NCD app than Government of India. So you could have a uh, API interface uh, you know, through which you could overcome some of the challenges. Similarly, Aishman Bharat, the Digital Health Mission is also attempting to do the same by ensuring that they don't uh, um, you know, dismantle the existing system, but take all of that positive system and then see how you can make it into a whole. Uh, you know, in terms of a EHR, in terms of a, a solution which can be given um, using the uh, IT solution. Similarly, it's a good example of uh, eSanjivani, the telemedicine uh, app, which um, is highly successful. All have utilized it, you um, know, in, in a big way in uh, uh, in all the states uh, during the COVID uh, times, especially uh, the people have also uh, taken in a big way in these kind of initiatives because it is very easily available and there is comfort. So, I mean, it is possible, but uh, yes, there are various challenges because of the complex nature of uh, our ecosystem, which we are trying to uh, handle. You have to take baby steps to move forward. As you have said, you also talked about the complexities of the challenges. Uh, uh, I just want to talk about one particular challenge that whenever I speak to various people, you also interact with various stakeholders. In today's days, there is no dearth of data, right? Uh, but the problem with uh, that huge data is that whether we are effectively using that data with proper analytics, right? So do you also find that, that that's also a challenge for the healthcare sector that the huge data which already we are procuring or we already have, but the right mechanism is still not there in terms of analyzing that data or that right uh, effective system is still not in place for the healthcare sector, if I may say so. What's your thought on that? I completely agree with you because uh, I have uh, been in the health department in two states. It's uh, in Karnataka as well as in Kerala. And I've uh, uh, also experienced that uh, the management of data is not to the desired extent. I completely agree. But having said that, we need to understand the complexities of uh, these uh, data analysis itself. Now, we have different types of data. We have the routine data coming uh, you know, on a daily or uh, you know, a frequent basis from the health facilities. Uh, that is one set of data which keeps flowing in. The quality of that data, the interpretation of data, making some sense of it and uh, you know, making knowledge out of it is definitely a challenge uh, which is there in, in the, in the uh, health uh, department. And uh, to uh, do a very effective monitoring and evaluation of that uh, entire program for example based on the data itself is not um, so robust and then we have the other set of data which is non-routine which is coming through various surveys and all that which is also happening so this data which is flowing in through various sources uh, various softwares and uh, through multiple reports which is coming in uh, uh, from uh, you know third party uh, publishers uh, from the various devices that we uh, install in various uh, uh, hospitals for uh, monitoring of the patients. I mean, the data is huge. Uh, so this is uh, basically a very big data, uh, which needs uh, very effective analysis. And uh, and also quality of this data is also equally important to even monitor and evaluate any particular initiative. And uh, these are the things which will probably be very, very useful when you look at a, a, a interpretation of uh, what is the kind of health uh, a scheme or a gap which exists in delivery of a health uh, uh, in a program. I mean, those are uh, very, very uh, crucial, which is not happening to the desired extent. And uh, the monitoring and evaluation as such, which uh, the 
you know ultimately the data ends up in this kind of a division which will have to make sense of this data and ensure the quality of data is maintained evaluate all the programs and the processes and give uh, positive feedback and critical feedback to improve the system that kind of a loop is not closed there are huge gaps in it and we are trying to plug that gap uh, for example in kerala we are looking at setting up uh, a full fledged uh, monitoring and evaluation division in the nhm uh, uh, pip which is coming up and we hope that important parameters indicators as per the sdg where kerala is the heading and then as per the nfhs survey based on their indicators we are uh, lagging somewhere now, for example in the family planning uh, uh, there are a few points which we have missed so we want to understand why that is happening currently we are getting a lot of data we are unable to make sense of it because we need to refine the data and make more uh, sense of it by you know doing that kind of a analysis and getting into the field and doing that kind of a dissection of the data which has not happened uh, very effectively and similarly the various softwares throwing various uh, you know results but unless people act on those analysis which is done and bring about a change nothing is going to change so you can have a beautiful system uh, it will keep throwing you results uh, about uh, where you are going wrong but if you don't have a team to make sense of it and tell the policy makers and the program officers that these are the changes you need to bring in your program to become effective then it really makes uh, no sense to have so much of uh, uh, data coming in and not making any uh, sense of uh, this and analyzing it yes the huge challenge a very valid uh, uh, point that you have raised i think uh, across the country nhm itself is uh, implementing so many programs and uh, i don't think there are efficient monitoring and evaluation tools and capacities in any state uh, to have a continuous monitoring evaluating periodically to see the progress of uh, uh, those uh, uh, programs whether it is really Uh, making any sense on the field with the kind of uh, plans that we take to the government and get approved is does it make any sense to approve these kind of things i mean these are all the policy decisions will come later on once we analyze the data interpret understand where we are heading and make sense of it after deliberation with the stakeholders and then get back i mean that kind of a thing is uh, definitely there's a big gap in that which we are uh, looking at the plugging uh, in the future lack of efficient and uh, efficient tool of monitoring that's that's what you're saying uh, sir uh, today and tomorrow we have got registration of more than 250 plus people who are attending this conference and there are industry leaders health tech innovators were part of this conference and also the uh, the leaders from the hospital ecosystem we are focusing on the southern part of the india for this fourth edition of this uh, prestigious conclave what will be your message uh, for the health tech innovators or the health tech industry uh, in terms of digital uh, leveraging digital innovation for the healthcare sector for the future what will your message and what are the areas of collaboration you're looking at i have always believed uh, uh, health is uh, uh, as a concept or as a entity is not limited only to some particular uh, department to implement or some particular stakeholder to implement it is a problem or it is a entity which has to be dealt by the community as a whole so each and every person is responsible for uh, health not only their own health but also the health of the community so it is a uh, multi stakeholder uh, involvement requirement and this ecosystem which is there it is very closely knit so if you're looking at various uh, partners who are going to be present in this uh, conference it could be uh, people uh, from the pharmacy it could be people from the manufacturing of devices it could be uh, the private hospitals it can also be the government uh, uh, you know sector uh, participants it can be public health professionals uh, who are uh, health professionals who are participating i mean uh, not limiting to all of this all of the people uh be it any other department be it any other person in any other industry they are all equally responsible for uh, maintaining the health of this community having said that what i would expect uh, probably uh, from the uh, critical uh, people who are dealing on a day to day basis with health it can be 
uh, from the manufacturing of uh, devices to the pharmacy or uh, to any other healthcare professionals. I mean, ultimately, we are all looking towards a universal healthcare goal as part of our uh, uh, you know, SDG goals itself. I mean, when we're looking at universal healthcare, I, that means we are giving affordable healthcare, the best healthcare in terms of quality, efficiency, effectiveness, in terms of ease of um, you know getting this healthcare as well. And if that has to happen, one, we all need to uh, not think health as a business, health as a service. You definitely, as a business entity, you need to make profits and no doubts about it. But uh, also consider this as a service so that we have a cap on our profits and our, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the funding that we are giving it to health for maintaining the health of the community. You know, it should be very efficient. Our rupee, every rupee that we spend in healthcare should have the maximum benefit. And if that has to happen, we all as a team, I need to come together and that kind of a synergy is needed to uh, ensure that this health is addressed as a service to the people, a service to the community and not just a business entity. And if that has to happen, we need to, you know, have, um, you know, a detailed R&D into each and everything that we do so that our costs, which are currently, uh, you know, uh, sky high in many of the areas in uh, uh, the health sector, uh, cuts down drastically the entire data which is coming in from the community on the health parameters is efficiently and effectively understood by that community and each and every person who is supposed to be acting on it acts on that so that our health parameters become a little bit more better i mean these are all ideal uh, you know scenarios but uh, you know if you have an idealism in mind probably you will uh, move forward in that direction and these things will fall in place and having said that everybody has the responsibility uh, be it the industry be it uh, any other sector so uh, let us consider all of us as uh, a team and work towards ensuring that this uh, whatever are the health challenges which a community is facing uh, be it uh, in a particular part of that community be it in that particular state globally uh, we need to all come together and work as a team and only then will uh, we'll be able to bring about a change otherwise if we have uh, any other motive apart from uh, a service motive in the uh, health sector then it will be very very tough and then there will be a clear divide between haves and have nots like we initially had this digital divide between haves and have nots uh, similar kind of a digital divide would also come in even in this era of um, uh, healthcare 4.0 will definitely have a divide haves and have nots and the haves will have all the systems um, to meet their needs whereas the have nots will probably still be in that age of uh, uh, you know healthcare 2.0 or 1.0 where there are still issues so if you all have to work as a community as a whole and bring about a change we all need to uh, keep apart our differences and work together towards one common mission that is a universal health care and best health care, affordable health care for everybody. Right, right. Let's eradicate that gap between haves and have not uh, by working as a team to improve the, to transform the healthcare scenario in India. That was the take uh, of Dr. Rathan Kelkar. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelkar, for joining us in the inaugural of the fourth edition of Health Tech Innovation Conclave organized by APEC News Network. But before we let you go, we have a small token of recognition for you from our side, sir. Uh, we want to present you with the APEC Healthcare Leadership Award. Can we have the certificate on screen, please? This award is proudly presented to Dr. Rathan Kilkar for his leadership role in the healthcare sector. It's our honor to recognize your efforts, sir. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. With Thank this, you. we move to the next speaker of the inaugural session. Thank you so much. Thank you.